What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today's Thursday, March 12th. Felt like just yesterday, Groundhog's Day was the slow grind higher in stocks. And now it's a different story, but almost like Groundhog's Day, where every day it's another big day down. Today, S&P's down 10%. Biggest one day move to the downside in the SSP since the 1987 market crash. So crazy stuff. And that's on top of an already massive move. If we look at the S&P's year to date, that puts us minus 24% year to date and about 28, 29% off of the all-time highs. So big time correction, my friends, big time correction. Dow down uh, over 2,400 today, NASDAQ down 774. Russell down 148, oil slides down about 6%, gold down also. So not a flight to quality there, not a safe haven in gold, especially today. We talked about that yesterday. Bonds coming down as well. So that flight to quality in bonds, that did not happen today. So interesting stuff there. Looking at some of these stocks that we track, I mean, Apple down almost 10%. So it's not able to hold its head up. Boeing. Boeing down 18%, now down 53% year to date. And beware, trying to short airline stocks. I think there's probably going to be an airline bailout. Boeing might be in that situation as well. From a standpoint of, I mean, they're one of, I think, two companies in the country that produce airplanes for the most part. I mean, they, you know, if, if they, if they keep tanking, I mean, that's going to affect the entire travel industry for, for years to come. So I would think that the airlines to some extent are going to get some sort of bailout. Speaking of bailouts, the Fed has come out with another $500 billion in short-term cash to banks, raising the entire kind of package to $1.5 trillion in easing in cash that's being put into the system. So they are, they're trying to do everything they can. You know, sometimes you got to let free markets do what they do. Now, I don't agree or disagree with, with what they're doing, but I would say, you know, sometimes this just needs to play itself out. Sometimes you just got to wash out what's needed and, and let the free markets bounce back. And they will. They always do. That is part of being a capitalist society. Now, this is a worldwide pandemic, so not just involving the U.S., obviously. And, and so that the thought is basically, how long is this going to last, right? How long will it be until the coronavirus is kind of kind of subsides and starts to go away. And, you know, it's just, it's reaching into every aspect of everyone's lives now, no matter what business you're in, the coronavirus is affecting you. Companies are shutting down travel. They're shutting down conferences. They're shutting down the ability to meet. But with today's technology, we've also, you know, like the technology I'm recording on right now, and you've got Zoom and Skype and all these different things. So web conferences and meetings, you know, they're still going to take place, but, the factories and the shutdowns and all the things that go along with the pandemic like this are pretty, pretty interesting. And, and nobody knows how far it's going to go. Now, the S&P is back in 2008. Let's, let's take a, a little trip down memory lane. Let's take a look at SPX and let's change our time frame to 20. Let's just go back 20 years and take a look. So let's go back to 2008, which would be right right here. So here's 2008. Let me just zoom in just on this area here. So from the top, let's call it right here. See at that point up 8% down to the bottom down 49. So from top to bottom about 50% in any kind of in the calendar year, I think the, the most the S&P was down 40. So it did from top to bottom, it did go about 50% in the peak to trough there. So we are not there yet, but again, you know, the velocity of the move. I mean, look at this just straight down line in the market. I mean, that is just a quick and dirty drop like we've never seen before. And so how long will this go is the magic question. But what did we do today? Well, 
We continue to roll down our deltas. So as the as the market kind of goes down, we're rolling down our strikes, just keeping that short delta intact. And so that has bode very well for us and our portfolio. We definitely need a bounce in oil. So we haven't done anything in oil yet. Bonds coming down helped our bond position. So that's all good. We started to dip our toes back into selling a little bit of premium, but staying extremely small. Sold an iron condor today. Also added an iron duck with a, a big downside buffer to it. What's interesting is... If you look at a, if you did an iron duck in SPX today, and if you did it with one that expires tomorrow on Friday, you could get a 200 point buffer to the downside, 200 points. Now I get that that could certainly happen, right? I mean, we're seeing in the S&P, uh, the S&P dropped 269 points today. So that can certainly happen, but you know, after a drop like this, adding a, a position on where you have no risk to the upside and another 200 point buffer to the downside. Let me just, let me change this back to pricing. You know, so if you put this on at 2480, you've got all the way down to 2280 way down here and that expires tomorrow. That's pretty nuts, especially if you compare it just to a few weeks ago. And I know this seems like 10 years ago, but a few weeks ago when the market was grinding higher and implied volatility was low and the market was at all time highs and you put on a, a duck with 21 days to expiration, you had maybe a hundred point buffer, you know, a lot of times 80 to a hundred point buffer. And now you can put on a one day duck with a 200 point buffer. That is insane. So crazy stuff. As always, keep your position size small, live to trade another day. Don't try to be a hero and uh, stay mechanical. Hope everybody has a good night. Talk to you tomorrow.